Welcome to Hood War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing the Black Street Gang. Black Street 13 is a Mexican-American gang located in Panorama City, California. Panorama City is a neighborhood in the San Fernando Valley of Los Angeles County. It touches Mission Hills to the north, Van Nuys to the south, Sun Valley to the east, and North Hills to the west. The neighborhood was the first planned community in the San Fernando Valley. In 1948, it was developed as such by residential developer Fred Burns and Henry J. Kaiser. Fred Burns, seeing the tremendous potential fortune that could be made as large numbers of World War II veterans came home and started families, teamed up with Kaiser in 1948 to form the Kaiser Community Homes. Homes in the area were sold with racially discriminatory covenants. A conditions, covenants, and restrictions document filled with the kind of recorder declared that no Panorama City lot could be used or occupied by any person whose blood is not entirely that of the white or Caucasian race. It wasn't until 1968 that this was outlawed. By the time immigrants from Mexico came in mass in the 70s and 80s, most of the Caucasian people moved to the more affluent areas of the valley. Currently, Panorama City is a mixture of single-family homes and low-rise apartment buildings. It has a generally young age range as well as the highest population density in the valley. More than half of its population was born out the country, with Latinos and Asians making up more than 80% of the population. In 1974, a small group of neighborhood friends who lived on Blythe Street began tagging BST and VPC. BST stood for Blythe Street and VPC stood for Barrio Panorama City. This group of friends were just kids between the ages of 13 and 14 who went to Fulton Junior High School. When the group of kids started tagging BST around the neighborhood on Blythe Street and around Panorama City, the Delano Boys, which is an original clique for Barrio Van Nuys, took notice and began to press a line on the young kids from Blythe Street. The Delano Boys would follow them everywhere they went and would even pull up to Blythe Street to challenge them. The youth from Blythe had no choice but to set up a defense. They were kids fighting men. The Delano Boys were much older, hardy members from the already established Barrio. This constant pressure from Barrio Van Nuys forced the Black Street youth to stamp themselves as a gang. They had their community, but the Delano Boys never respected it because Blythe was just a single street in their eyes. During the early days, this outside static from Barrio Van Nuys scattered the Blythe Street gang, but Clanton 14 was there to back them up. Clanton 14 became involved when Blythe first started because a few Black members had friends from the Clanton Dukes and Tiny Locos clique. By 1979, the Black Street clique had gained momentum and was rolling at full speed. By 1985, the 14600 block of Black Street was plagued by crime, drugs, and diseases. At its center, Black Street is an insular barrio of about 50 rundown apartment complexes of various sizes spanning two blocks between Van Nuys Boulevard and Willis Avenue. At that time, rent for a one bedroom apartment was $200 and as much as $700 for a three bedroom unit. But for many families on that street, even that was too much. According to the census in 1990, 65% of the apartments on Blythe were overcrowded, housing more than three people per bedroom. This was almost triple the countywide rate. Nearly one in five apartments on Blythe Street were occupied by 10 or more people. Building inspectors have cited owners for bad plumbing and heating, broken doors and windows, rats, cockroaches, and lack of electricity. Because few outsiders see or travel through Blythe Street, Few complain about its conditions. Many of the residents were afraid to complain. Part of the fear stems from the fact that many tenants along Blythe Street are undocumented. Police say that although Blythe Street is undoubtedly one of the highest crime areas in the San Fernando Valley, statistics are misleading because 90% of the crimes go unreported. Authorities needed more cooperation from the residents in the community. An estimated 4,000 people live on the street, with 96% of the population being Latino. Just a few of Black Street's problems include diseases, teenage pregnancy, hunger, and illiteracy. Police call Blythe a supermarket for drug dealers. The gang that controls that block, the Black Street Dukes, deals drugs openly around the clock, except when police officers are present. About a third of its 100 members live on Black Street. Authorities say the gang members rob pedestrians, burglarize apartments, and vandalize cars. Gunfire can break out when a deal goes sour or when an intruder appears. The street was once barricaded, so there's only one way in and one way out. Black Street gang members used to have old couches sitting on the side of the street. If an outsider made a mistake and drove in, they pulled all those couches out in the middle of the street and trapped them. The barricade was initially constructed in 1987. 
to help police arrest motorists who purchased drugs from the Black Street Dukes, whose members sold drugs from posts along the sidewalks. For nearly 18 months during this period, an LAPD anti-drug task force targeted the street and made over 500 arrests. But in 1989, when the force was disbanded, the barricade was left behind. And in 1990, at least five deaths were attributed to it. One teenager died when he and three friends made a wrong turn onto the street and were fired at while fleeing gang members who had surrounded the car near the barricade. They didn't even live in the Van Nuys area. They had been heading to a friend's house in Burbank and were searching for a freeway. When they turned onto Blight Street from Van Nuys Boulevard, they were not gang members and they all had jobs and lived outside of the San Fernando Valley. One of the black views that surrounded the car carried a high-powered assault rifle and fired two rounds into the hatchback rear window as the four boys tried to escape. But it tore through the rear seat and struck the boy in the back. His friends called for help from a payphone at the corner of Valero Street and Van Nuys Boulevard. The boy was rushed to Holy Cross Hospital where he died about 20 minutes later. Authorities said it was unclear whether the gunman thought the boys were members of a rival gang or whether he had been angered when the boys tried to drive away. Gang members also stoned cars trying to escape through the streets on the exit. Some motorists were robbed and beaten. In early March of 1992, the city removed the concrete barricade that was located at the intersection of Blythe Street and Willis Avenue and replaced it with a stop sign. Traffic was now able to flow freely through their neighborhood. With the barricade down, gang members scrutinized suspicious cars that may be carrying rival gang members. Sometimes stealing children playing on the street to go inside if it seemed like violence was about to erupt. They were also leery of unfamiliar customers who may be a part of a police operation sting. There had been six drive-by shootings on Blythe Street in the three weeks that followed the barricade's removal. Many believed that rival gangs had been waiting to get back at the Blythe Street Dukes. And the removal of the barricade provided them with the easy entry and exit point to carry out an attack. On October 31st, 1992, at around 7.50 p.m. Landlord Donald Aragon and his brother Emmanuel were leaving this building on Blythe Street after preparing one of the units for a new tenant. As he and his brother were getting ready to pull off, his truck became surrounded by eight to 10 Blythe Street gang members. The gang members wanted to steal Donald's truck to drive to a Halloween party on Hollywood Boulevard. One of the assailants stuck a gun up to his head and told Donald to get out the car. The gang members began chanting, shoot that fool. But instead of getting out of his car, Donald reached under his seat and pulled out a pistol. Donald and the gang member exchanged gunfire. Donald was hit twice in the upper torso and died. Before his death, he was able to strike two of his assailants, killing 19 year old Abel Sanchez and wounding a 15 year old boy in the mouth. The wounded teenager was arrested shortly after the shooting and booked on murder charges. Donald had been part of a group of property owners who were trying to improve the neighborhood. Although police said the killing was a carjacking gone sour, Donald's wife believed her husband was targeted by gang members for obstructing their drug trade. Members of the Guardian Angels, who were a New York-based civilian crime prevention group, had been asked by a landlord to patrol the neighborhood. But after the shooting occurred on their first night out, they never returned. In April of 1993, a Van Nuys Superior judge issued a 22-point injunction against the Blight Street Gang in Panorama City forbidding gang members to engage in many otherwise legal acts. The order was the second of its kind in the city's history and far broader than the first. The order prohibited gang members from possessing portable radios, large flashlights, and radio scanners. Police and residents say those devices were used to alert gang members when officers were approaching. Other parts of the order seek to stop the gang from harassing or intimidating residents, trespassing blocking streets or driveways, or harboring anyone who appeared to be fleeing from the police. Furthermore, gang members were ordered to stay off rooftops, where they allegedly acted as lookouts, unless they are making emergency repairs. On November 26, 2000, at approximately 3.30 p.m., Magdalena was walking to a store on Blythe Street when she passed a group of male Hispanic gang members who were standing nearby. At that same moment, a dark-colored car drove alongside her and the gang members began shooting at the vehicle, who they believed to be full of rival gang members. Magdalena was accidentally struck by a bullet to her upper torso and died shortly after. On March 16, 2001, at around 7 a.m., Van Nuys homicide detectives executed search warrants at various locations, leading to the arrest of four Black Street juveniles. They were ultimately booked for murder. 
It's no secret that Blight Street's biggest enemy is Barrio Van Nuys. BVN is located south of Blight Street's territory, stretching from Sherman Way to Burbank Boulevard between Woodman and the 405 Freeway. Barrio Van Nuys is one of the biggest gangs in the valley. They've been going at it with Blight Street for decades. At around midnight on September 27, 2009, Anna was with her friend Marlene and Marlene's infant son, Andrew Garcia. Anna was sitting inside the front passenger seat, holding Andrew in her arms and feeding him a bottle. Marlene was talking on the phone while sitting in the driver's seat. They had just got back from a baptism party at a nearby banquet hall. Melvin, Frank, Eric, and Giovanni were standing on the sidewalk to the right of Marlene's parked car. Frank and Giovanni were members of a tagging crew called TGR, and Eric was a member of the Barrio Van Nuys gang. The group saw two men walking on the sidewalk on the opposite side of the street toward the car. Anna then heard one of the men on the opposite sidewalk scream, Hey, fool, where you from? Eric then stepped off the sidewalk and walked toward the man across the street. It felt like he was about to pull up his shirt. Eric did not have a weapon. One of the men on the opposite sidewalk unleashed a hell of gunfire. Marlene said she heard at least 10 shots. At that point, Eric and the other men in his group began to run. When the shooting stopped, Marlene saw the two men run past her car. Anna was shot in the left eye, leaving her completely blind in that eye. Eric sustained multiple gunshot wounds to his back, neck, and face. Andrew was bleeding and gasping for air. Marlene took the baby and ran toward a convenience store to ask for help. Andrew was taken to a hospital after police and an ambulance arrived on the scene. He died from multiple shotgun pellet wounds to his head. After the shooting, Anna identified Alfonso on the photo lineup. An eyewitness who lived on the next block said she saw two young Hispanic men, one of whom was carrying a very big gun on his side. The man carrying the gun had pimples on his face and his ears were very large. Once the men saw the eyewitness, they ran toward Van Owen Street. Following the incident, the eyewitness identified Ricardo in the photo lineup. Carlos Garcia, who was a fellow member of Blight Street, talked with police about the shooting. But at trial, Carlos denied that he cooperated with authorities. Alfonso and Ricardo Hernandez from Blight Street were ultimately convicted of first degree murder and six counts of attempted murder. They were each sentenced to 100 years to life. Blight Street is also known to be for most gangs from Bacoima. One of these gangs include Bacoima Tresse. On the afternoon of November 30th, 2016, Mario and Presoso were at a bus stop. Although both were members of the Bacoima Tresse gang, they were in Black Street gang territory. A gray Nissan drove past and stopped, and a man and woman exited the vehicle and began yelling at Mario and Presoso. The woman walked up and said, What up, bitch? This is Black Street. The man and woman then squared up. Mario was concerned because Persoso was wearing a Pittsburgh Steeler hat, which is associated with the Bacoma Tressa gang. The driver told Mario that he had the strap and that they should get down. Mario replied that he was from Bacoma Tressa, but he didn't want no trouble. However, the driver told them to meet him around the corner so that they can handle that. Instead of meeting them around the corner, Mario and Persoso waited at a nearby swap meet for nearly an hour until they thought it was safe. After leaving the swap meet, they were walking when the same gray Honda did a U-turn in front of them. The passenger got out the car and said, Fuck Pockers, and shot Mario. He then said, You too, bitch, and shot Brasosa. After five shots, Mario and Brasosa both dropped to the ground. While at the hospital recovering, Mario and Brasosa told authorities what happened and identified the shooter. She described the shooter as a 5'5 male Hispanic between 18 and 19 years old, wearing a hat with a B on it. Jonathan Gonzalez from Blight Street was ultimately convicted on two counts of attempted murder. He was sentenced on count one to life with minimum parole eligibility of 15 years per the gang enhancement. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.